Hi, my name is Adriana and today I am joining you from the floor for a ski trip packing video. So I have a couple different packing videos on my channel. I love packing and I love traveling and I also love skiing. So I go skiing most weekends in the winter. Some of my friends and I have kind of a bigger ski trip planned. We're taking a day off and we're staying in a big Airbnb and we're going out on the town. So I think to get started, I'll start with the most important part of a ski trip, and that is the ski equipment. <laughs> I have a pair of Nordica Santa Anas that I bought new this year, which is very exciting. I love them immensely. They're very curved. They're great all mountain skis. I ski with a 158 centimeter length because I am short. The Santa Ana 93 is what I ski with. As far as poles go, I just have the cheapest <laughs> ski poles that were available to me five years ago when I got back into skiing. They're Solomon's, but they're just regular aluminum poles. I had them cut down a little bit because I like my poles short. Nothing real special about these, like, as far as I'm concerned, you don't need nice poles for just regular downhill skiing. Like, you can get away with just cheap chintzy poles because they tend to be the first thing that breaks if you have a bad crash and they bend pretty easy so it's nice to just be able to throw them out and replace them. And if you aren't a big, you know, adventurous skier like me and I hardly ever crash, they last forever even though these were like $20. <laughs> Those are my skis and poles. My boots are actually in my ski gear bag, which I will show you next. So this is my ski gear bag. I love it. It was my Christmas present to myself last year. It is incredible. It has two different compartments. So it has this compartment on the bottom for your boots and then a compartment up top for helmet, goggles, coat, pants, everything else. So I will separate that out and show you guys. So my boots are also Nordica's. I don't really know a whole lot about them. These I also bought about five years ago when I first got back into skiing. And I just asked them for like middle of the road ski boots. Something that was fairly nice, but not exorbitantly expensive. And these were it and I have really no complaints about them. This is the bottom section of this bag. It's all lined with this kind of tarp material so that you can put the boots in wet and keep them separate from your other gear so you don't get all your other gear wet. And it's also nice because the bottom is like pretty nicely reinforced. So I can just throw this all in the back of the truck on our way to and from the mountain or on our way to and from like whatever town we're gonna be staying in. So it's nice that I don't have to be too, too careful with this bag. It's really heavy duty and really nice. I've been using it like, I guess almost like a year now. So it's done me good. Opening up the top portion, we have my ski backpack. Also, Dakeen, my mother-in-law, got this as a gift for me two years ago. I love it. It is a nice, a nice little size. If you're wearing like too many ski layers, it's big enough that you can fit a layer in, but it's not like bulky. I can still wear it while I'm on the chairlift and I don't feel like it's taking up too much space on my back. It has an outside pocket, or it has two outside pockets actually that I don't really use. It has a top pocket here for like sunglasses. It's really soft on the inside, but it's not really big enough for like ski goggles. So it's more so like like if you want to bring a pair of sunglasses with you, you can store them in there. In the main compartment, I mostly keep snacks. <laughs> so I have tons of like trail mix and M&Ms and everything else that are just quick, easy snacks you can eat on a chairlift. I also keep with me my sunscreen. Sunscreen is really, really important every day. But especially when you ski, if it's sunny at all out, all of that sun is going to reflect off of all the snow and just all of that light is gonna bounce off all of the white snow everywhere and bounce onto your face. So a lot of people will end up getting sunburnt just like right around their goggles or whatever else and not super comfortable and not a great look. It's a very rookie look to have at the Opre Ski. Starting with my base layers of what I wear when I ski, I have this pretty old Nike running shirt. It's like a, I think it's like a winter running shirt but it's 
just a white kind of mock turtleneck number. I've been using it for years. It does a great job. It has like the little thumb holes in it. I don't typically use those, but it's fairly heavy but still kind of like light and breathable and it is a hundred percent synthetic no cotton no cotton blends on the mountain cotton kills do not wear cotton on the mountain <laughs> and then i usually wear two pairs of long johns actually so this first one i have is columbia and it's super super thin material but it's actually got like this reflective material on the inside so it reflects your own body heat back to you. So you know like as you're moving and skiing and generating heat from your movement, it reflects that all back to you and kind of helps keep you warm. But because they're so thin, unless you're like actively moving, they don't really provide much like insulation or warmth. So I typically wear like a heavier long drawn over it. So these are just a smart wool, I think they're a mid-weight base layer, but they're a little bit thicker. They're merino wool, so they're really, really warm. That kind of double duty and two types of both reflective heat and insulation helps keep me a lot warmer on my bottom half. So then over the top of those, I have my ski bibs. I love bibs. I have been wearing ski bibs since I was a little kid. Bibs are just, everybody thinks pants are cooler, but bibs are coming back into style and I think it's because everybody's recognizing they are so much more practical. Like the snow pants, they end at your waist, so if you crash, snow's gonna get down your pants. Not a problem with the bibs. So these are Burton. They actually still make this model, but I really, really love these bibs. They have a drop bottom. So these straps actually stay on and you can drop the bottom of the bibs out so you can go to the bathroom. So they're a lot more convenient that way than some of the other bibs I've had in the past. They're not super thick, so they're easy to like move around in and they don't feel constrictive. The insulation is actually really, really effective. So even though they don't feel super insulative, they actually are. So I think that technology has come a long way because you know it used to be you needed a lot of fill to keep you know yourself warm, but insulative technology is gotten much better. This also has a pocket on the front, which is nice. So you can just like stow things real quick right in your kangaroo pocket. Oh, I forgot to talk about my socks. I also use smart wool socks. I have two different pairs. I have this gray pair and then I have another like purple pair. I love smart wool for their socks and especially their ski socks. So they're extra padded on the front side where your shin sits and then just really thick and warm everywhere else. And then for my coat, I have this Columbia pullover coat. It has that same reflective technology as those long johns do, so that does help. It has like insulation as well as the reflective heat on the inside to help keep all of that reflective heat next to your body instead of just like letting it all go out. I've been using this coat for I think two seasons now and I really really enjoy it. The only thing that's like not super great about it is just the fact that it is a pullover. It is a little bit difficult to like take on and off but it is a lot warmer I think than a traditional like like full front zip coat. So I typically don't even need to wear like a mid layer between my Nike base layer and this. I usually get away with just that and this unless it's like super super cold like single digit cold I will throw on like a sweater or a puffer underneath and then under my helmet I wear a balaclava this one is black what is this black strap which is super super popular in the ski community now like I see these everywhere but it's just like this super cute print and it goes all the way over your face and you can pull it up over your nose and it keeps you just a lot lot warmer than just like a hat or like a regular buff like this where it's just a circle I'll use this when it's a little bit warmer out and I can just put, like keep this around my neck and pull it up over my nose on the lift it doesn't stay up as well and it's not as comfortable as this is to keep your whole head just warm Warm. you lose most of your heat actually through your head so having an insulated layer over the top of your head does keep you a lot warmer. My helmet is the Smith Allure. So this one's actually pretty old. I need to get a new helmet for sure probably end of this season beginning of next season because this is important to know helmet foam does degrade. So I think sometimes they even have like a expiration date on them. Yeah, it might not be on ski helmets, but I know like a lot of my dirt bike helmets actually have like little dates that say like, hey, at this point, the foam in the helmet is degrading. And if you crash, 
it might not be as protective as it could be. Also, this helmet being a couple seasons old, suffers from the fact that it does not have the new helmet technology in it. There is a new kind of helmet technology called MIPS that is a lot more protective and kind of helps with keeping your head from like twisting. I will definitely be upgrading to something with MIPS but probably still stay in the Smith family. I really love Smith helmets. I have a pair of Smith goggles as well. So I have the IO Mag S Photo Chroma Pop goggles. These adjust to the light in the area. <laughs> if it's really bright outside, the shades will actually get darker, and if it's lighter, they will get more clear. So I have this kind of rose tint for during the day, and then for night ski, I actually have another pair of lenses that are more yellow, so they're a little bit easier to see if I am skiing at night. And then there's just like little magnets in this, so I can undo the clips on either side of these goggles, and then this pair of lenses just clicks in. And then finally, I have my mittens. I also, along with bibs, mittens are not as cool as gloves but they are so much warmer having like the heat from your hands like being able like your fingers to benefit from the heat off of each other keeps them so so much warmer so these are burton and they are gore-tex exterior they have little pockets on the outside that you can put like hand warmers in to help keep your hands warm if it's really cold out but generally these are enough to keep my hands warm on like a pretty cold day. They also have a little soft spot on the thumbs that like are kind of like microfibery, so you can use them to wipe off your goggles if they start to get like ice build up or just snow or water or whatever else. That is all of my ski gear. So we are showing up on a Friday and then we're actually only skiing on Sunday. So Saturday will be kind of just like a brewery hangout day with my friends and then we're leaving on Monday. So I do have some kind of extra clothes packed for just kind of like hanging out and hitting up breweries and exploring around the town. So I'll start with what I'll probably be wearing on Friday, just like a sweater. I'm wearing some jeans. This is kind of my daily uniform in the winter. I love sweaters and jeans and hanging out. So I will be using this Weekender bag from um, what brand is this? Low and Sons. So I love this bag. It is the perfect size for just like a weekend. If I were bringing another pair of shoes, there is a compartment on the bottom where you could separate your shoes out from the rest. But if you're not bringing another pair of shoes, you can drop out the little separator and then just use the whole depth of this bag for clothes and everything else. So I guess I will also be wearing just my trusty pair of Danners. They are super comfortable. I think they look really cute and nice. They have more of like a sneaker sole, but they're still pretty like heavy duty and uh, waterproof, so they're good for slush and walking around. So I guess starting with the largest part of this bag, which is this packing cube right here. This is actually a new to me packing cube. My sister bought me a, a set of packing cubes for Christmas and they're super cute and I will definitely be using them a lot in the future. But starting with this one, it's a pretty large packing cube, but that was nice because I could just fit like everything, all the clothes for the weekend just in one and it just slides in and out real quick. So the Airbnb I booked for us has a hot tub, so swimsuit, important. I brought two t-shirts for just like lounging and hanging out at the Airbnb. B&B and then the set of packing cubes came with this super cute little pouch which I'm using for like a bra, underwear, socks, that kind of stuff. So that's super cute that it just like fits in there all nice. And then this packing cube actually has like some straps in it to like cinch down your clothing. So I'm bringing three different sweaters to wear Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because like I said, I love a sweater. And they're basically all the same sweater in different colors, so I don't really feel the need to like pull them out and show them all to you. They're all kind of like this fair aisle pattern and a regular looking sweater. <laughs> so I can cinch them all down and then that leaves tons of space on top to put t-shirts, swimsuit, underwear, and then I just realized I forgot to pack sweats, so I'm gonna grab some sweats. <laughs> so I just grabbed these gray fleece sweats from Costco. They're great. I love them. Those just go right on top. And then this all zips up into one nice, easy to take in and out, set on top of a dresser, 
boom. So no trip with my friends would be complete without my handy dandy hangover pouch. It is full of Pepto-Bismol for nausea, ibuprofen for headaches, and liquid IV that I hopefully remember to take while I'm drinking so that I don't get hung over. Liquid IV is also really great for, you know, when you're skiing or working out or doing something, doing an activity that is going over a long portion of the day where you'll be potentially sweating for a long portion of the day. And then these ones are the lemon ginger, like they have like matcha in them. So these actually have caffeine in them. So sometimes when I'm skiing and I don't wanna drink like a full cup of coffee, I can just drink one of these, get some good hydration and a little kick of caffeine that's equivalent to like a cup of coffee instead of dehydrating myself starting right at the beginning of the day. I also have my handy dandy tech pouch. It has my multi-port charger, got a couple different cords on this side, and then on the back here we have my Anchor Slim Battery, and then of course any reader, good readers travel companion is an e-reader. I use the Kobo Libra H2O. I have a couple reviews of this on my channel, so you can watch those if you're interested more about the Kobo. And then finally, I have my little toiletry bag. So this also came with the set of packing cubes, and I love, 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 love this toiletry bag. Like, it is the perfect size. So I was using something that was actually a lot bigger than this. Like, a, it was kind of like the same length, but a lot like wider. And the reason I like this length is because I can fit my toothbrush all the way across and it just fits in there easy peasy, no problem, versus a lot of smaller toiletry bags. Like if you try to get something that's like a small profile, they always like shorten it and then I can't fit my toothbrush in there. That's the first thing in my toiletry bag is a toothbrush. I also really like traveling with these like makeup removing cloths. So you don't have to use like, I mean, I still typically use a cleanser, but you don't have to use a cleanser with these. You can just add water and they're really good at like taking off like quite a bit of makeup. I also have a hairbrush for like detangling. I like to put my hair in a braid when I ski. So it's nice to have a little hairbrush available. Deodorant, obviously. <laughs> Toothpaste, obviously. I have a different sunscreen here. So this is my like kind of daily sunscreen that I like to use, but I find when I ski that sometimes this will, like if I start to sweat, it will kind of run into my eyes and sting versus the Neutrogena one I had in my backpack it does like stick a little bit better. I am not a dry shampoo girl, but I am a baby powder girl. So if my hair starts to look greasy, I just like to throw a little bit of baby powder in there. A razor, since we will have access to a hot tub. I have a little travel oh, spray bottle of my hydrating toner. This is just my daily lotion that I can decant from the bigger bottle into this small little airless vacuum pump. Some tweezers and some cuticle cutter things. Like these are just really good for like hangnails. So if you get a little hangnail, you can just doop, doop, doop and it's super nice to have just like stuff like these just in case you run into something. And then this bag also has like a little zipper pocket on the back here that I can use for Q-tips and bobby pins and I have like these little clear elastics. So if we were just like staying on the mountain and not like going into town or anything, I would probably just stop at this for all my toiletries because we're just skiing and I don't really need to like look super nice or cute or whatever. But because we are gonna be kind of exploring around town on that Saturday, I did bring another pouch with like some travel glam essentials. So eyebrow gel and mascara. This is kind of my daily, I wear these like every single day. <laughs> some concealer, a little blush and bronzer duo set, a little bit of lipstick, a tinted moisturizer with SPF that I love, some highlight, and then some brushes for application. So that is everything I would bring for a ski weekend. Although I don't know if I mentioned this. I also have this puffer. So this is Arcteryx. So this is just like a little puffer that I can wear while we're exploring around town so I don't have to wear my big ski jacket. And if it's super, super, super cold, like negative degrees outside, I can wear this under my ski coat to keep me extra warm. But I think that is actually everything. So that is everything I would bring for a ski trip weekend. Let me know what you pack on a weekend trip. 
If you have any tips or tricks with me on how to downsize any of what I bring, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video.